Dr. Sterrett, will you please step forward? This is the moment. <laughs> Dr. Sterrett, the Board of Trustees of Salem Academy and College has chosen you to join the long line of visionaries stretching back more than two centuries. Men and women committed to making the ideal of equality in education and advancement and opportunity for women a reality. This medallion bears the great seal of Salem Academy and College. The three Greek letters are Kappa, Gamma, and Delta, standing for Greek words meaning knowledge and virtue. We are confident that in your leadership you will take this motto to heart. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I place this seal over your shoulders as a symbol of your high office and of the privilege and responsibility you now hold. The chaplain knows how to do that uh, <laughs> clasp. So ladies and gentlemen, and Dr. Starrett, by the authority of the Board of Trustees of Salem Academy and College, you are vested with the powers and privileges and charged with the duties and responsibilities of the office of President of Salem Academy and College. Thank you. Thank you so much. With a full heart, I accept the considerable responsibilities of the office conferred by the Board of Trustees, and I promise to lead the institution with a vision for our future that will rally and unite faculty students, staff, and alumni for the glory of Salem ever. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to introduce the 20th president of Salem Academy and College, Dr. D.E. Lorraine Sterrett. Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the Board of Visitors, alumni, faculty, staff, students, colleagues from far and near, friends, and family. That would be my American family, otherwise known as Bert, and my Irish family, represented by my sister Anne and my brother Nigel, who have traveled from Ireland to be with us today. And all the family members and friends, whether in the United States or in Ireland or elsewhere, who are joining us via live stream. To everyone, I extend my heartfelt welcome to our beautiful campus and my heartfelt gratitude for your joining us in this magical place on this joyous occasion. Let me also say a very special word of thanks to Trustee Beth Rader and the Presidential Search Committee without whom I would not be here. <laughs> to Margaret Pike, class of 94, and her merry band of helpers for their many months of extraordinary work in introducing me to the Salem family far and near. And to Gwyn Stevens Taylor, class of 72, and her merry band of helpers, including Judy Line and Lynn Stewart, class of 97, 
for their many months of extraordinary work in planning this inauguration. Without them, y'all would not be here. <laughs> many presidents note in their inaugural addresses that they are honored and humbled to lead a great institution. I too am honored and humbled to lead a great institution. Indeed, never more humbled than this past fall when I began hosting a series of receptions for Salem faculty and staff in my backyard. One faculty member brought her seven-year-old daughter with her. She introduced me to her daughter, and she said to her daughter, this is our new president. Do you remember I told you we were going to meet our president? This daughter responded most disappointedly, I thought you meant Barack Obama. <laughs> Lest there be any ambiguity, I am being inaugurated today as president of Salem Academy and College. But let it be noted for the record that since this great institution was founded in 1772, four years before the Declaration of Independence, I am presiding over a great institution that is four years older than the great institution over which Mr. Obama presides. Imagine, imagine what it took for the Moravians to find a school for girls in 1772, a school that grew into the Salem Academy and College of 2015. Those Moravians knew they were on to a good thing. Today, Salem is recognized as the oldest continuously operating educational institution for women in the country, an institution that has never closed its doors through thick and thin, an institution that has always and will always prize both academic rigor and service to humanity, an institution that has welcomed every qualified student regardless of color, creed, or social standing, an institution that saw 12% increases in enrollment at both the academy and the college this year, which represents record-breaking enrollment in the college and necessitated the building of the McHugh Sisters Flats, so named by a very generous donor. An institution that stands strong today because of the work of my 19 predecessors and the scores of women and men who shared their dedication to the institution. An institution that remains firm in its commitment to single gender education. This year, the seniors made a t-shirt that says, dead before co-ed. <laughs> they gave me one. I assured them that they were preaching to the converted. Every time I walk past Main Hall, I am inspired as I look up at the sign that reads, Salem College, founded 1772, a liberal arts college for women. Imagine, imagine what it took. It took vision. It took courage, it took boldness, it took leadership, it took unity, it took a commitment to learning, it took dedication, it took practical know-how. In short, it took both idealism and pragmatism working together. And it took every member of the community working together just as today our community depends on the work of faculty, staff, trustees, visitors, alumni, volunteers, and friends, 
a veritable army of people who serve our wonderful students. And every role was and is essential and valued. As Adelaide Fries reports in her book, The Road to Salem, among the brethren, all work is honorable. And if a man or woman is doing something that needs to be done, the task is considered equal with the other tasks, no matter what it be. We lay little stress on the nature of the work, but much on whether a person is industrious and honest. Some things have not changed. It took a recognition that girls and women needed and deserved the same quality of education that boys and men received, and that they needed it at an early age. We are thus blessed to this day to have both a prep school, Salem Academy, and a, and a college, Salem College, as constituent parts of our beloved institution. And I do hope that that seven-year-old will enroll at both the academy and the college. We're ready, I think. Salem was led by highly educated men, continues Dr. Fries. The brethren Groff and Tiersch had been students at the University of Jena and brother Marshall at the University of Leipzig, two of Europe's leading centers of learning, it should be noted. But, continues Dr. Fries, instead of making them despise the needs of little children, it made them so alive to the value of education that they started schools for the boys and girls of Salem as soon as there were children who were old enough to learn their letters. When one plants a seed, it is interesting to watch it come up and grow and develop. The tuition back then was one shilling per week. Some things have changed. What has not changed is an unwavering dedication to learning. The term liberal arts, artes liberales in Latin, is the education worthy of a free person in order to take an active role in civic life. Contrary to popular belief, Freeborn girls were as likely as were boys to receive formal education, especially during the time of the Roman Empire. The curriculum comprised grammar, logic, and rhetoric, which in the Middle Ages became known as the trivium, and arithmetic, geometry, Paula Young's very happy about that, astronomy, and music, which in the Middle Ages became known as the quadrivium. The term liberal arts today includes the humanities, the natural sciences, and the social sciences. A liberal arts education arms our students with the verbal and math skills that prepare them for life and for any career they may choose. Employers love to hire students who can read perceptively, write clearly, speak eloquently, think critically, and do the math, as the saying goes. Our Greek motto, knowledge and virtue, stands behind us every day. Our seal, designed in 1907 by a student named Dorothy Doe, bears the three Greek letters, gamma, kappa, delta which Bishop Ron Toller gave to the class of 1907 as its motto. Thanks to some brilliant detective work on the part of Deborah Austin, a classics major here at Salem College and a member of the class of 1978, we now have deeper insight into the meaning of our seal. Reverend Austin figured out that Kappa stands for Chi, the Greek word meaning and, that gamma stands for gnosis, the Greek word meaning knowledge, and delta, delta stands for dikaiosune, the Greek word for justice, righteousness, or virtue. These concepts could not be more closely connected both to our Moravian heritage and to our purpose in the 21st century. Acquiring knowledge and living lives that benefit other people. Acquiring knowledge and using it in the service of virtuous causes. 
acquiring knowledge and putting ourselves to work on alleviating and eliminating poverty, hunger, disease, violence, discrimination, and bullying in school and in the workplace. Imagine what we can do as we begin to write the next quarter century of Salem's history. It is our privilege and our responsibility to ensure that Salem's future shines as brilliantly as does her past. The task is entrusted to us, who follow in the many footsteps of our idealistic and practical predecessors. Do what we must, do what we can, and do what we shall. What will it take? It will take vision, it will take courage, it will take boldness, it will take leadership, it will take unity, it will take a commitment to learning, it will take dedication, it will take practical know-how, and it will take every member of the community working together. That may sound familiar, like the Janus figure, we look simultaneously to our past and to our future, a future in which we must invest all our moral resources as we come together as one. At our core is the very same boldness of purpose that distinguish our Moravian forebears. At the same time, we must prepare our students for lives of purpose in the modern world. We are in the process of planning for a new sciences and mathematics building, one wing of which has already been funded by a very generous donor in honor of alumna and trustee Lucy Rose, class of 76. Yes. <laughs> We are building this building so that our students, the next generation of scientific researchers, professors, and physicians will have the very best tools and resources at their disposal. They deserve no less. The society they will serve deserves no less. But the modern world and the ancient world are not separate entities. Modern learning builds on all that the scholars of the past so diligently and so faithfully laid out. Modern day science did not appear ex nihilo, nor did modern day politics. As we create the knowledge of the future, we are building on knowledge acquired in the past. We honor that past, even as we expand upon it. This fall, we are bringing back to Salem the study of German, the study of Latin, and the study of Greek, even as we plan for that state-of-the-art 21st century science and math building. Imagine, imagine the path our forebears took. Imagine the path that lies before us. Today we stand at the intersection of our glorious past and our exciting future. A future that is ours to dream, to shape, and to realize. Let us do so with vision, with courage, and with boldness, because we owe nothing less to the women and men of purpose who preceded us, to the women and men of purpose who are our contemporaries, and to the women and men of purpose who will follow us. In the words of the Moravian motto, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, love. Thank you very much.